Hello YouTube, it's Rish Sheehan. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment on my videos. Today we're going to discuss the five areas size does not define, and I wrote those down. The first is size does not define sexy. I can only share from my own experience, but I have seen women of size um, that have totally and completely changed what sexy is defined as. Um, but to be honest with you, I have never, in, in real life, real time, I have seen women of all shapes and sizes, men too, that are in relationships with people. And it, it, it doesn't take away from the sexy. Now, there's some people that will... They may not be attracted to people of size. That's fine. Everyone has a type. But like Derek Jackson said, sleep on those big ones if you want to. Sleep on them if you want to. Thin does not equate to sexy, nor does it equate to loyalty. So, you know, it is what it is. But as a woman of size, and I've been this way for about 15 years, I've been svelte, and I and right now I'm Rubenesque. Now, my first marriage, I was fairly in good shape. That marriage was a disaster. The, my last marriage, I was not in good shape, bigger than I am now, and that was that man was the love of my life, loved me right where I am, right where I was at the time. So. And the reason why that marriage ended is because he passed away. That's the only reason why it ended. Because it certainly had nothing to do with him being sexually attracted to me. Size does not equate to sexy. Size does not define sexy. So it is how you decide. You decide you're sexy. Everybody defines their own level of sexy. So you dress how you feel. And every day when I walk out the door, I have to be head to toe gorgeous. It's just the way I have decided to be. So I define my sexy and it, my size has nothing to do with that. Two, set size does not define success. I have read several articles about people who were, people say that if you're not attractive and, and they equate being overweight to being unattractive, that your, that your success, the level of success is not, you won't achieve as much success as your felt counterpart, which is total and complete bull. Total and complete bull. I make more money than most people, most of my contemporaries. And again, I am a woman of size. Size does not define that. Size does not define success. Your determination defines success. What you decide, you your goal in life, your career goals, that's what defines success. So... Another myth. Number three. Size does not define suavity. And suavity, S like Sam, U-A-V-I-T-Y. Please look it up. It is another word for poise. It doesn't define. Your size does not define your suavity. How suavecito you are. I can't begin to tell you how many times, how many men approach me in my DMs, approach me face to face, how many compliments I get from both men and women. The other day I was at work and these two young ladies of Ethiopian descent, and I have always found women of Ethiopian descent is just completely gorgeous. From head to toe, they just, it's just, 
they're just beautiful to me. Now, let me just preface this. this. I'm strictly dickly. So this is not me hitting on women because I'm attracted to them. But when I see a person that is pretty, a woman that's pretty, I don't have a problem saying, I think you're pretty. I digress. So I'm going, I'm coming out of the building to go and answer a service call. And these two women are passing me. And one of them says, you are gorgeous. And my brain did not register it right away. And so I turned around and said, huh? And she said, you're really pretty. And I was just so taken aback. Like, thank you so much. Thank you. Because I was thinking the exact same thing about them. How beautiful they are. So after, you know, we talk, they go in. I go in, answer the service call. I come back, getting ready to get on the elevator. And I see them with a colleague. Now, I work at a health organization. So, you know, neither but. Anyway, I see them with a colleague as they are checking out. And I'm like, okay, we need to treat them. And I say to my colleague, let's treat them with the utmost respect. They are just two gorgeous women. So I get to tell my colleague and the women are sitting there and they're laughing. And the colleague, you know, is like, you know what? She is beautiful. Rish Shin is beautiful. We all think that. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. I mean, again, I think I'm beautiful, but I don't know how people see me. I just know how I decide that I've decided that whenever I step out the door, I'm always going to be put together. So it was really nice to hear. It was really nice. But then I shared with these women. I'm like, I thought the same thing. And I, and I, when I, I shared with them when I saw them that I instantly thought Ethiopian. And they were like, how did you know? I'm like, you can, you can tell. Ethiopian, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous women. The model Iman is Ethiopian. And if you haven't seen Iman, I mean, when Iman first came out, there she she was in this horrific um, automobile accident that um, they had to reconstruct. I want to say they had to reconstruct her face. I don't know. And if, if but you, if they did, you can't tell. She looks more gorgeous now than she did when she was younger. That's, that's Iman's beauty. Iman is beautiful like that. And most Ethiopian women are beautiful like that. Like they they get more beautiful as they get older. It is astonishing to me. And that's just how I see it. That's my opinion. Uh, but again, just, and it was, it was so flattering because I don't think, I don't know what people say or think when, I mean, I, I've heard trolls tell me how fat I am. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and of course, people always equate fat with ugly, which is totally not true. But anyway, I digress. So again, size does not define suavity, which means poise. Fourth one, fourth thing that size does not define is self-assurance. How you feel about yourself, regardless of your size, is dependent on you. You have to decide that you're fabulous just the way you are. Now, there's this book, and it is called Your One Word. The Power, and I I wanted to write the rest of the, the title down, but his name is, uh, the, the author's name is Evan Carmichael. And he actually has a YouTube channel that you should go check out. But Your One Word. And every time I see his videos, he talks about the one word to define yourself. It's a very you one powerful word that defines you. And I have always used fabulous for for um, at least ten years. When people ask me how I'm doing, I'm fabulous. I know I'm doing something fabulous. I'm fabulously tired, fabulously fabulous, but I'm doing something absolutely fabulous, fabulous. So that's my powerful word that I use every single day when someone and everybody, every time, you know, people always ask, how are you doing? That's just, we're, we're programmed to do that. And I always say, I'm fabulous. There are people that just call me, Hey, Miss Fabulous. How are you doing? I am fabulous. Fabulous. And I'm done. My last point of what 
Size does not define is smart. Size does not define smart. There is a study, and please forgive me, I don't remember where I saw it. It could have been on ABC News. It could have been um, CNN, or it could have been. Uh, I, I watch a lot of PBS, uh, NPG, or NPR rather, not NPG, NPR. Um, and so it could have been more on the the, MP, uh, the PBS or NPR websites or on their YouTube channels or on TV. And like I said, I watch a lot of PBS um, where it talks about there's a study that says that people they were there was a poll um, and they showed two people, one person of size, one person that was not. And the question was to the people that were being polled, who's smarter? And I wanted to say, like, there have been seven out of ten people said that the person that was thinner was smarter. <laughs> I, I don't know why. They, because, again, people, we get caught up in aesthetics. In aesthetics. Robert Greene, who, again, you know, I'm, I'm reading his book, The Art of Human Nature. One of his points that he makes in The Art of Human Nature is called Appearance bias appearance bias and that's what as a woman of size i've experienced the troll wanted to tell me about how my you know about my size and and then equip my to that troll my my page is boring my my youtube channel is boring and i can only assume that it's because i'm not what talking about the latest and greatest gossip that i'm not uh, making a fool out of myself that i'm not uh, out here twerking or doing something that would totally completely give me a whole lot of, uh, of likes or dislikes on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, but only like looking at Andrew Caldwell. Andrew Caldwell has a huge following, and but you, when you go out and look at his page, you see people are just making fun of him. The majority of people on Andrew Caldwell's Facebook and Instagram, and I'm when I say he has 178 over 178,000 followers. On Facebook and over 42,000 uh, followers on Instagram and every time the man goes live you don't see people that are just uh, they're liking his stuff they are you're seeing people that are making fun of him just relentlessly relentlessly so I guess that's why my page is boring I'm not Telling these outrageous lies. And Andrew Caldwell's, if you ever watch anything he does, it is just, sometimes I have to try, I can't watch it. It's The lies are just ridiculous. This young man works at CVS, but supposedly he had to turn down a $350,000 deal. Anyway, I digress. Size does not equate, size does not define smarts. I am an intelligent woman. I'm a woman of size. I'm intelligent. I work in IT, information technologies. I'm smart enough to be able to figure out problems that are computer related. There are people that have phobias, included, and I work at a healthcare organization. There are doctors, there are nurses, there are people that have more education than my bachelor's degree that have phobias when it comes to computers. But here they are. Some of them have PhDs, some of them have their MDs, some of them have the, some there are nurses that have their bachelors. There's I mean there's not bachelors but they're masters. But the computer just it just intimidates them. Not every problem I've come across am I able to solve like that. However, the majority of them I'm able to solve like that. But I'm a woman of size. I was smart enough to understand that in order for me to change my economic situation, I needed to choose a job that was going to totally and completely wean me off of welfare. I chose information technologies. 
Now, there was another troll that came on my page to tell me how I was a thought because I had two kids that I couldn't take care of. And in a previous post, I shared how, one, I was engaged to be married when I first had my daughter, and two, I was married when I had my son. That didn't stop the fathers from leaving me. But that did not negate my issue of being able to get off of welfare. That was my goal. So here I am, a woman still, at the time I was not a woman of size when I decided to go into IT. But if anyone that knows anything about IT, that those are sedentary jobs. You don't do a whole lot of moving depending on what job. And I wasn't uh, a person that was, in, in, um, I didn't start installing switches till much later. So network switches and routers and things of that nature. And I didn't do that that often that I would always be up and, and moving around. And even though there are days where I go on service calls, that's still, most of the times, I'm sedentary. I'm at a desk, working on a database, working on an SOP. It, I'm not moving around. So I went from being a thin woman, svelte, to Rubenesque within five or six years of being in IT. Now, no one else's fault. I needed to watch what I was eating. I needed to exercise more. You know, to at least get 10,000 steps in. Something I'm doing now. But then, you know, I was too busy. I would, one of my biggest things was cook, cookies and coffee. Chocolate chip cookies. Famous Amos chocolate chip cookies and coffee. With all the sugar, the cream, the all that stuff. Yep, that, that was not the wisest but it still didn't have anything to do with me being stupid. So size does not define your smarts. Now I say all this to say, we as people of size define us. We cannot allow others to define us. And you're going to have a whole lot of trolls out there. They're going to say and do a lot of negative things. The goal is to learn to swap that, take that energy and use it to your advantage. I'm naming a couple of books in this post, in this conversation, that have helped me. And hopefully, you'll look into them. Again, I'm a, a avid Audible listener. I have over 100 Audible books. And I have all the books that I've named. So let me repeat the books. The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Um, Evan Carmichael's Your One Word The Power of That Word The Power of the Definition of That Word I believe And then The Art of Human Nature By Robert Greene Again Evan Carmichael has his own YouTube page Look him up I don't think the other two um, Authors do But those are three books that have totally helped me in my pursuit of utter, utter fabulousness. So, YouTube, I want to thank you for taking the time to stop by and talk and share with me. Until we meet again. Au revoir.